fences are coming down in downtown Reading. A ceremony honoring local folks who have gone above and beyond. And an expert on crisis prevention is helping Chico State students through traumatic events. All that and more starts now. Live, local, breaking, news you can trust. This is the North States News at 6.30. Good evening, happy Monday. Great to have you with us tonight. I'm Mike Mangus. About 1,000 Shasta County employees have voted to go on strike on May 1st. United Public Employees of California, UPEC, Business manager Steve Allen says they voted to strike for a two-week period after months of negotiations and impasse and mediation efforts. He says they've asked for a 15% raise because of inflation and have been offered 2.5%. It's not Jericho and they're not walls, but the fences are coming down in downtown Reading. Construction fences surrounding the Block 7 project on Tehama and Market Streets finally being removed. It hasn't been officially announced, but Viva Downtown and businesses there shared this news with us today that the alley will be open again, a new street to connect with California Street as well. We're told there will be a ribbon cutting ceremony Friday afternoon. A staple on Market Street since 1979 is celebrating this step forward. It's beautiful. Um, the energy has changed completely downtown in the last 10 years. Just all the changes that have been made. We're really excited about it. Um, so many families and kids and dogs and yoga classes and stores and new people coming in and wine tasting. It's really exciting to see the changes and we're super excited to have the fence come down. There's so many great businesses and we've all been like locked down with all the fences and construction for so long. I, I know it's been painful, but it's, it's been worth it because it's lovely now. Christina says she's enjoyed being able to see and wave to her neighbors again. After the fences come down, Shasta College is expected to move into their new location on the northern section of Block 7 sometime within the next month. Friday's ribbon cutting ceremony will be at 3 in the afternoon with a walking tour of the area just before that from 2 to 3. And looking toward downtown Reading through the Hasselrood Law Sky Cam, first alert meteorologist Brian Schofield is in the Weather Center tracking rising temperatures. Hey, Brian. Oh, plenty of them to go around, that's for sure. But first and foremost, a flood watch in effect. And people are going, okay, hold on, the skies are pretty clear right now. It's not about falling rain, it's about what has already fallen technically and snow melt, really. Thursday to Monday, and that's through Lassen County. Uh, we're talking eastern, uh, looks like Plumas as well as uh, Sierra. Uh, a little bit of Modoc too right there. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of that, not only a uh, snow melt to fill up the rivers and streams, but really go fast, furious, and certainly very cold as well. So just keep that in mind, flood watch in effect. Interesting, right, to see that kind of a flood watch, but it certainly can happen. That's all the way to Yosemite too, and there are, they got the flood watch before the rest of the Sierra. All right, satellite radar composite, look at that dry, clear, warm, sunny, mostly sunny, let's say. We're still getting some higher thin clouds in. I think we'll still see that through the week, but it'll still be a glorious week ahead. It'll just be warm. You'll want to seek some shade. Now those spots where you want to park the car in the shade, you really will look for those. But all that moisture staying out of the way for now, so we're not seeing much in the way of that. We are seeing some clouds kind of move their way in. That is something that we're keeping our eyes on. There's your 12-hour precision cast, but essentially we're talking about a uh, big April warming, mostly sunny skies, and more valley wind on the way. I'll tell you who gets hit the hardest in your first word forecast coming up. Thank you, Brian. People who have gone above and beyond in encouraging and supporting violent crime victims were honored by Butte County's District Attorney's Victim Assistance Bureau. Supervisors passed a resolution recognizing this week as National Crime Victims' Rights Week and recognized the advocacy of the Victim Assistance Bureau for local crime victims. First responders from all over the county gathered in the board chambers in Oroville to celebrate their accomplishments. This theme calls upon our communities to amplify the voice of crime survivors and to create the proper environments where survivors can gain confidence. And it's that confidence to know that they will be heard, believed, and supported. Chico Police Detective Sophia Parsons and Oroville Detective, uh, Police Detective Jess Darnell were honored for their outstanding work in sexual abuse cases. Sexual abuse survivor Brianna Richards was honored for sharing her testimony that led to the conviction of Berry Creek rapist Andrew Hankro in 2021. And Chico bouncer Brad Strickland was stabbed in 2014. He was the featured speaker sharing his gratitude to first responders and law enforcement who saved his life. 
Between more frequent wildfires, school shootings, and a pandemic, school professionals have had to adapt the ways in which they support students. A national expert on school crisis preparedness stopped in Chico today to speak to psychology students about entering the workforce at local schools. Dr. Stephen Brock is a school psychology professor and program coordinator from Sacramento State University. He said one of the biggest things new school professionals have to deal with when someone is recovering from a crisis is social media. Word of any kind of school associated crisis event is going to get out and it's going to spread quickly. And oftentimes in the absence of a carefully crafted message coming from the school, rumors start to spread. The social media landscape is huge and widespread and it's really changed the game in terms of information access. And so what it means is that schools now more than ever before need to be prepared to respond and respond quickly with timely information. Dr. Brock says everyone in the building has a role to play when responding to and recovering from a crisis. Crime time, a man has been arrested for setting several small wildfires in Butte County Saturday. Three small fires were contained at about a quarter acre off Freedom Road. Luke Sky Davidson is charged with starting them. He was arrested in Concow. Davidson was taken to the Butte County Jail. His bail set at $22,000. A Tehama County parolee was arrested in that county after taking a trip to San Francisco. Deputies say the person last Thursday traveled to the Bay Area overnight without permission. The person was tracked to a travel trailer where a gun was found along with drugs including methamphetamine. The parolee was arrested and booked into jail on several charges and I'm sorry we were not given a name or even the gender of the parolee. And one person is dead and at least four others wounded in a shooting in San Francisco last night. It happened outside a topless bar in the city's North Beach area. Witnesses say they heard four to six gunshots and workers at the club rushed to help. A 23-year-old man died. The other people are expected to survive. One of them is a woman. With at least four people killed or injured, it's considered a mass shooting. The famous ghost boat. You remember that? It got an honorable send-off. That is next. And trying to build relationships, keep strong with the community of classic cars and... Classic cars and one of the last classic drive-ins in Reading. We'll check out a show and shine at Dudes during a week when the biggest threat to an expensive paint job is not raindrops, but pollen. That's next. Famous ghost boat has been escorted to the coast. Do you remember the World War II Navy barge found in Shasta Lake in 2021, you know, when the lake was so low? Cal Fire held a ceremony in Weaverville last Thursday. Nicknamed the Ghost Boat, it's being restored and sent to Nebraska to be displayed in a museum. It was discovered about two years ago near Bridge Bay Marina. The Shasta Trinity National Forest says the painted numbers indicate it was part of the USS Monrovia. The Ghost Boat is headed to its new home in the National Guard Museum. Classic cars were reading this week and some of them showed up at an iconic drive-in restaurant today. If you didn't see them, you might have heard them. Yep, it's cool April nights in Reading, and with Jean's drive-in gone and Pop's 50s place recently damaged by fire, one of the last classic drive-ins to host classic cars is Dudes here on Hartnell Avenue since 1965, when Enterprise was an unincorporated area. What better place for a show and shine, hosted by a fourth generation owner? Trying to build relationships, keep strong with the community of classic cars and build that importance of relationship and keep strong with the community and we want to be around longer. We want to keep that old vibe, the old school ways of doing things and you know see more more of them come in. We'd like to increase what we're doing right now with our car community and grow it actually. You know it, it's kind of like keeping an old restaurant is like working on a car. You know, it takes time, effort. Um, we got to put a lot of work into it, just like they got to do. And so it's kind of a unique bond that we kind of have. Both Chevys and Fords well represented. Different makes, but the same story for a lot of owners. Looking back to their younger days. I had one right after I got out of high school. And I've always wanted another one. I've had a lot of other cars, but I always wanted one back. I knew what I could build it into. 
Uh, I'm just a Chevy guy. I used to have one when I was younger, and I always wanted one back again, so I have a couple other cars too, but this is kind of my favorite. Of course, Cool April Nights rolls on all week in Reading. You can find the schedule on krcrtv.com. Our annual Stuff the Bus. We're going from cars to buses. Stuff the Bus food drive is coming up next month. Before Christmas, we collect toys for children. And in the spring, we collect non-perishable food for North State families in partnership with Carl's Jr. to fill Salvation Army pantries in Reading and Chico. On Friday, May 12th, we'll be at the Carl's Jr. on East Cypress in Reading trying to fill a robber bus and at the Carl's Jr. on the Esplanade in Chico trying to fill a Beeline bus. We hope that you'll stop by and see us. Look at these big numbers. All those temperatures just continue to climb through the weekend, uh, but they do come to a stop. And I'll show you how low they drop and how strong the winds get before they do in your first look forecast coming up. And there's a lot of snow melt right now. And coming right from the snow, that water can be very cold. Playing it safe when we come back. Documented water levels in local lakes have risen, and so has the downstream uh, releases. At 7 o'clock this morning, Sacramento River flows from Keswick Dam were increased from 4,500 cubic feet per second to 8,500 CFS. The increase is part of these spring pulse flows aimed at helping juvenile salmon downriver and mature returning fish up the river. The river hasn't been this high since August 2021. Bureau of Reclamation Area Manager Don Bader told us why this year is different. Last year was one of the worst they had seen for water availability, so flows capped out at 4,500 CFS, when 8,500 to 10,000 is typical to meet agricultural demands. Another important consideration is preventing Shasta Lake from filling up too quickly. And Don says they won't be opening the floodgates, but pulse releases can help control the timing of the full pool. Be careful around high running streams and rivers right now. Snow melt has them running cold and fast. The average water temperature of the Sacramento River between Shasta Dam and Balls Ferry was 51.5 degrees Sunday. And the National Center for Cold Water Safety says water below 60 degrees is immediately life threatening. Never go into the Sacramento River until it warms up enough around, you know, Butte and Glen counties. My friend Tim Mapes says be ready in case you fall in. Oh, it's all about preparation. Like we said, if you're going to be going near these waterways, whether on it, on a boat, or if you're hiking near those waterways, you have to have a life jacket with you to, to give you the best chance if you happen to fall in. You know, simply falling in can cause that gasp reflex, and you can get some water in your lungs, and it becomes a dangerous situation very quickly. We obviously would not want to have to have the dive team go out in these conditions, and the best way to do that is to prepare so that it doesn't happen, hopefully. Tim says prevention starts with making sure all your equipment is in working order before you need it. PG&E is putting on a webinar for Shasta, Tehama, and Lassen County customers. They'll be sharing updates on wildfire prevention and safety. It's set for Thursday from 5.30 to 6.30 in the evening. And for more information, check the PG&E website and search wildfire and safety webinar and events. And always drive safely, too. This is the view of Highway 44 from the North State's news roof cam. Hopefully, you'll have time to get out of your car and enjoy the evening. Here's First Alert meteorologist Brian Schofield. Hey, Brian. Please do enjoy it. I'll tell you, we've got some nice warm temperatures today. Warmer yet this week, we know that. Uh, not dangerously warm, but they're picking up pretty quickly. I mean, above normal by about 20 degrees. That makes a big difference in how it feels. Along the coast, still looking at the temperatures in the 50s, but down the valley, look at that. Still in the 80s. Mostly sunny skies throughout the day. And then we'll get some breezes for tomorrow. Peak gusts maybe closer to 30, but in general, we're talking about winds 15 to even 25 miles per hour. Once again, with those gusts coming up, notice that most areas aren't seeing those a little bit through Crescent City, Del Norte County, but down to the south here, it's all about the winds, but not in the evening hours, not so much. No, they'll be done by the evening. So we'll just have them throughout the late morning and afternoon hours. So plan on that. Uh, also plan on high pressure sticking around. I mean, it sticks around so long this week. It's like that, uh, what that house guest that after three days starts smelling like fish. Yeah, this is way too much, but 
maybe not so much. I don't know because the temperatures are coming down for early next week, but it'll be around all week long pushing those numbers up to those 90s. And here's why. So high pressure obviously rules the roost right now. Uh, but it won't last because as much as it starts to peak, it does start to slide out of the way as well. It has to make room for cooler air. It's always the ebb and flow of the jet stream getting that rid of it and really bringing in some of that cooler air as it dips down to the south through Monday. And that cool air sticks around through a good portion of next week. So this is really this week's event to see those 90s and middle 90s at that. Unbelievable stuff. Good stuff. But next week we do cool things down, get to more reasonable levels. 78 Lewiston, 71 Mount Shasta, that's a big number. We start seeing 70s in the upper elevations, you know we're doing good, but Altura set 66 is a big number there. 72 Bernie, middle 70s through Shingletown, so a glorious day tomorrow. Enjoy it before the real heat comes, right, with those middle 90s showing up by Wednesday and Thursday. And that's just high pressure sliding overhead, really making itself known across the area as well. So definitely looking at 85 Oroville, 84 through Orland. And uh, still, taking a look at the temperatures across the way, we're definitely starting to see uh, those 90s appear. You've got the breezy conditions that show up tomorrow. That actually might make it feel nice. I don't want to sell the wind as always a bad thing, certainly. It's nice to get a good breeze, but when it gets to be like tomorrow, be a little nuisance wind beyond 20 miles per hour, yeah, definitely. But a lot of sunshine on board, definitely looking at those temperatures that's staying uh, really, I mean, some decent numbers there. They're warm, sure, and they're above normal. But, you know, we've been dealing with such cooler temperatures for so long, I guess it shouldn't surprise anyone that we start to see those 90s across the board. Take a look at the Chico forecast. A lot of sunshine still. We'll call it mostly sunny to just plain sunny, getting some higher thin clouds in this week. Overnight lows in the 50s to lower 60s, with afternoon highs sticking with the 90s until the end of the weekend. And it's that end of the weekend we start to see an increase in cloud cover later on. And then for early next week, notice the temperature drop right there. As you saw, high pressure starts to slide out toward the east. And that, as it weakens and moves out of the way, then we start to drop temperatures 10, 15 degrees or so. Now here is your weather window. Weather Window, presented by the National Weather Desk. Incredible images from a widely visible aurora borealis last night. Severe geomagnetic solar storms allowed for the northern lights to be seen as far south as Texas. Iowa meteorologist Nick Stewart even captured a meteor streaking across the purple and green sky. Early Sunday morning, it was a much more dangerous light show in Texas as this lightning bolt struck a tree near San Antonio. For more content like this, like the National Weather Desk on Facebook. As mine did. Do you know the value of a dollar? Well, Sinclair's Atra El Nashar does. This moment of global economic uncertainty bringing fears of a de dollarization, the U.S. dollar losing its status as the world's reserve currency. The dollar's value falling from its 20 year high last fall, but still higher than it was this time last year. Turmoil in the banking sector, an aggressive Federal Reserve, and slowing economic activity fueling the dip in value. Meanwhile, countries like China and Brazil leading calls to find a new reserve currency, reaching an agreement for bilateral trade to be settled in their own currencies. And this could take hold with other countries like Malaysia, whose prime minister recently said there's no reason for them to keep relying on the dollar to attract investment. But the greenback still reigns supreme, accounting for more than 58 percent of global reserves, according to IMF data. And even those who are pessimistic about the U.S. economy point out that if other countries started looking for another reserve currency, there's no obvious alternative. Where are they going to uh, move? Are they really going to hold large quantities of assets in RMB? Fed Chair Jerome Powell, whose track record on inflation has been heavily criticized, says the dollar's status isn't facing any real threat. I think it's a, it's a pretty stable equilibrium. It's not a permanent equilibrium, but there isn't really a serious competitor. The euro is the second most traded currency, but trails the dollar by more than half its volume. Decades of precedent and economic strength keeping the dollar on top, but not stopping other countries from at least rocking the boat by looking elsewhere. In Washington, I'm Atrel Nishar reporting.
Travolta War for Saturday Night Fever sold at auction for $260,000. In the 1977 drama, Travolta's character escaped the realities of his life by dominating the dance floor at the local disco. But of course, you knew that. You can thank or maybe blame the movie that helped popularize <laughs> disco music around the world and the white three-piece suit Travolta War became iconic. I may or may not have worn something similar to that at some point. <laughs> Put it on eBay quickly, yeah. please. <laughs> right, let's take a quick look at our heat. Oh, he brought the heat in that movie, that's for sure. We've got it coming up. We've got 80s and soon to be 90s this week. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. And there's a look at Redding from the Hasselblad Law Sky Cam. All right, we've got the 7 at 7 coming up. And Sade Brown will be here to bring us that. Oh, full time, that's a... Local breaking, news you can trust. This is the North States News 7 at 7. Hello and happy Monday. Thank you for joining us on the 7 at 7. I'm Shade Brown. We got an update tonight on a push by some environmentalists to stop the Forest Service from using fire retardant. A judge heard oral uh, arguments today in Montana, and that's where we begin our seven stories of the night. The push to stop the U.S. Forest Service from using fire retardant continues, a judge hearing oral arguments in Montana Monday. An environmental advocacy group is alleging that the chemicals and fire retardant is harming fish and waterways. The town of Paradise and Butte County have both filed a motion to intervene, saying that the use of fire retardant is critical when it comes to fighting big forest fires. And they say without fire retardant, disasters like the campfire would have been even worse. The California Forestry Association is also one of the groups that filed a motion to intervene. They said the impacts of this litigation could have major ripple effects. The director, Matt Diaz, saying in a statement in part, Over the years, we would likely see our air quality continue to worsen with toxic smoke. As businesses burn, jobs would be lost, local economies would struggle. The list goes on and on, which is why I hope the court ensures we never have to live in that reality. The group behind the lawsuit, the Forest Service Employees for Environmental Ethics, says in addition to the environmental impacts of fire retardant, they just don't believe it's effective at all. Reporting in Chico, Manasadic, the North States News. Officials are urging caution after a number of hikers have been rescued at Orville's Table Mountain. Physical injuries, snake bites, and more have plagued hikers traveling to North Table Mountain Ecological Reserve to see the super bloom. Butte County Search and Rescue Team, EMS, and CAL FIRE have responded to medical emergencies on the mountain. Just last week, a hiker was rescued by helicopter after being stranded on Phantom Falls Trail. On Saturday, a hiker was taken to the hospital with a sprained ankle, and Friday, an air ambulance was sent to help an individual bitten by a snake. Table Mountain is a remote area, and officials told me it's difficult for emergency units to get to the reserve, especially with overcrowded parking. Travel to and from Table Mountain uh, for us as emergency responders is difficult, uh, especially when uh, people impede the uh, roadway with their vehicles um, or walk directly on the roadway. So we ask that people uh, obviously park off of the roadway and, and move out of our way when, when we're responding. Dyer said it's important to know your own limitations when hiking. Table Mountain may look flat, but it can get pretty steep at certain points. Officials say to make sure you have the right equipment and share your location if you have a cell phone or another type of GPS device. I'm Anwar Stetson for the North States News. Envision 273 is a comprehensive plan that would ultimately revitalize a stretch of highway that has not been upgraded really for about 50 years. Among the goals for redesigning Highway 273 is reducing barriers for mobility and enhancing safety. The 273 corridor between Redding and Anderson has proven to be a dangerous one, with one-third of biking and pedestrian deaths in Shasta County occurring along the highway, according to the Shasta Regional Transportation Agency. We're going into this with no preconceived notions. Everything's on the table, and it's a really exciting time right now because there's historic levels of investment in infrastructure. We're going to study the corridor, come up with a couple of solutions to the challenges that the people have identified, and then put together a couple of ideas and put it back to the people and say, what do you think? And that'll happen probably around uh, fall of 2024. And then we put together the plan, take it to our board for adoption in like January or February of 2025. 
The first public workshop for Envision 273 will be next Wednesday, May 3rd, in downtown Reading. For the North State's News, I'm Sam Comenti. And this week will mark a big accomplishment for downtown Reading's revitalization project. The fences surrounding the Block 7 project on Tehama and Market Street are officially coming down. Viva Downtown and businesses there shared their exciting news with us today. The long stretch fence surrounding the construction zone has limited the view of businesses in that area, now both to possible customers and also to each other. There will be a ribbon cutting ceremony Friday afternoon to celebrate. After the removal of the fences, Shasta College is expected to move into its new location on the northern portion of Block 7 sometime within the next month. Now, Friday's Ribbon cutting will be at 3 p.m. with a walking tour of the area from 2 to 3. Anything that you do to reduce the fire risk is one step that you've taken closer to protect yourself and your family. Lori Templeton started Grind Fire Defense with her son, John, who is a firefighter. They cleared space for Lori's mother during the Monument Fire almost two years ago and realized the impact they could have. We decided to start Grind Fire Defense so that we could help community members, residential, small business owners, um, actually clear that space around their property when they didn't have the tools or resources to be able to do that on their own. Lori says defensible space has proven to make a difference in protecting homes from fires, which can be fast moving and unpredictable. Fire doesn't know your house is any different. This year, vegetation has grown high and fast thanks to some much needed rain. But all that tall grass and vegetation will soon turn into flash fuels. Lori says now is the time to create that defensible space before fuels dry and peak fire season begins. Because I'll tell you, fires burn at night and embers fall and you're sleeping and you don't know. And there's these risks that if you mitigate, it's creating that peace of mind for you, especially with all the vegetation growing. Pouring in Redding, Mason Carroll, The North States News. Snowmelt has rivers and streams running dangerously cold and fast. The average water temperature of the Sacramento River between Shasta Dam and Balls Ferry was 51.5 degrees on Sunday, and the National Center for Cold Water Safety considers water below 60 degrees immediately life-threatening. To understand how to prevent severe consequences, we spoke with the Shasta County Sheriff's Office. Yeah, you know, it's all about preparation. Like we said, if you're going to be going near these waterways, whether on it, on a boat, or if you're hiking near those waterways, you have to have a life jacket with you to, to give you the best chance if you happen to fall in. You know, simply falling in can cause that gasp reflex and you can get some water in your lungs and it becomes a dangerous situation very quickly. We obviously would not want to have to have the dive team go out in these conditions and the best way to do that is to prepare so that it doesn't happen hopefully. MAPES added that prevention starts with ensuring all of your equipment is in working order before you need to use it. Reporting in Reading, Preston Dunyon, The North States News. The Butte County District Attorney's Victim Assistance Bureau held a ceremony honoring locals who have gone, quote, above and beyond in their encouragement and support of violent crime victims. Now, the Butte County Board of Supervisors passed a resolution recognizing this week as National Crime Victims' Rights Week and recognized the outstanding advocacy of the Victims Assistant Bureau for local crime victims. Now, first responders gathered from all over Butte County to Oroville Supervisor's Chamber to acknowledge the officers and victims of violent crimes at this year's celebration. Chico PD Detective Sophia Parsons and Oroville PD Detective Jess Darnell were honored for their outstanding work in sexual abuse cases, while sexual abuse survivor Brianna Richards was honored for sharing her testimony which led to the conviction of a Berry Creek rapist in 2021. Brad Strickland, a Chico bouncer, stabbed in 2014, was, feature, was a featured speaker of the event, sharing his gratitude to the first responders and law enforcement that saved his life. All right, there's still a lot more to come tonight on the 7 at 7. Uh-oh, a new scam is targeting iPhone users. What to do if you find yourself suddenly locked out of your own phone? That's next in our cover story of the night. But first, you're looking live over Reading from our House of Rude Law Skycam. That is a great shot right there. We have sunny skies ahead. The full forecast coming up in just a few minutes. The time right now is 7.08. I'm Shadé Brown, and this is North States News.
back. Now, last month, the Anderson Police Department warned community members of a phone scam. Now, officers posted to Facebook saying they received reports of people claiming to be the Anderson Police Fraud Unit, which does not exist, folks. Now, they said that they would refer to victims by name, saying the call would be was being recorded and even use the names of real officers. They would eventually ask for payment for the alleged services through gift cards. Now, the police department wanted to remind folks that no government agency of any kind takes gift cards as payment. And again, there is no Anderson Police Fraud Unit. If you have fallen victim of the scam, please reach out to APD at the number you see right on your screen. Now, looking a bit larger, there is an emerging threat to Apple phone users everywhere, and victims are left permanently locked out of their accounts. Mike Valerio explains how it works and how you can protect yourself in our cover story of the night. It's a feature meant to protect you. A method for Apple to be able to verify that you say who you really are. But the Wall Street Journal reports thieves are exploiting recovery keys to lock you out of your account. They can just generate a new recovery key, basically take over all of your uh, information, your data, any of your apps. For it to work, thieves have to know your passcode and have physical access to your phone. A lot of the times it's in crowded areas where the thieves are you know, looking for people that are, are easy marks, easy targets, and they will watch them pull out their phones and watch them enter in their passcodes. In a statement, Apple says it's always investigating additional protections against emerging threats. In the meantime, here's what you can do to protect yourself. Apple's screen time setting allows parents to set up a secondary password to help control how long their children are on the phone. You can use that to add a second layer of protection on your own device. Also, back up your phone to the cloud often. This will help you recover your data if the worst happens. And most importantly, guard your passcode when in public by covering your screen or using Apple's facial recognition. You want to think of it as like your house key, you know, because you're let, you're almost letting the people in when the thieves steal your phone, they're getting into your life. In Los Angeles, I'm Mike Valerio reporting. We'll get a load of the temperature. It's going to see them climb up for tomorrow. Also going to see the wind climb as well. We'll show you how strong it will get in your first alert forecast coming up. We're truly feeling the temperatures rise as we get through the work week. First alert meteorologist Brian Schofield is standing by with the latest. Hey, Brian, it hey. feels like it's warming up. Yes, it I'm is. excited. Sundial earning its name. There'll be <laughs> lots of that sun, even though I kind of put up the moon graphic there. But anyway, just to give you an idea. Let's do a look at the sundial temperature. No joke, right now, 81 degrees, 7.15 in the evening. Looking good, feeling good as well. The issue might just be the wind. It's along the north coast right now, but it's going to be here for tomorrow late morning, afternoon, but not much beyond that. So really, it'll be a north to south flow. They're already starting to see it there as it marches its way out toward the east with a low pressure system just kind of taking its way. Kind of, It's really a squeeze play between high and low. And I, don't, I won't get too technical about it because I just want to show you the winds are going to get to about 30 miles an hour. Just suffice it to say, that's all you need to know in the last for a few hours worth here and there, but still below caution criteria. So we don't have any advisories there. Just remember out toward the east around the Sierra, we're talking about swift rivers. We're talking about cold water. So there are flood watches there. So keep that in mind if you're heading anywhere this weekend because uh, those that flood watch will continue through the weekend, but the winds you look at that they die down by about 8 p.m. So not much going on just some breezy conditions. Hey, we could use a good breeze anytime you get those 80s across the area, you definitely need uh, some breezes around the area. So that's what we're looking at. But let me just show you how it plays out in our long range. Here's your precision cast. Watch all the clearing that we get. We get some clouds, sure, but look at all, that's all high pressure, just keeping everything to the north. Nothing can seem to work its way in. Then notice we get just kind of a batch of clouds and that moisture fetch, it really is just cloud based. We don't see any sort of a rain bearing clouds, not here, maybe up to the north. And that's what will uh, effectively cool our temperatures down. We'll get a little more energy through here, but that's next week. Leading up the rest of this week, it's all about the heat. Yeah, we've got heat this week and it's not going to break until early next week. So prepare yourselves, get ready. 78 Lewiston, uh, looking good in Lewiston. You'll be in the 80s before you can blink an eye, but tomorrow is just our day to start to ramp up the numbers a little bit more. 69 Fall River Mills, 72 Bernie. Uh, you know, these are good temperatures. We've got middle 80s that'll soon be middle 90s down the valley by midweek. It's just a quick warm up. So it might surprise you when you start to see these numbers. You go, okay, we can handle the 80s. Well, not only that, but in the same week, you have to be able to handle the 90s too, because they are on 
their wave. So breezy tomorrow, we'll call it, uh, by Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That's when we see the peak numbers, even Saturday too. It doesn't look like that's going to wane much for the weekend. Uh, high pressure doesn't really slide out toward the east until we get into Monday. And that's when we start to see a 10 degree drop. But we're not going to see that initially. It's a 10 degree rise in the temperatures. Overnight lows in the 60s. Boy, early evenings will be so pleasant. When that sun sets, it'll just be glorious. These will be some great numbers. Actually, during the day, it'll be fine too, but it'll be warm. You'll notice that. I'm going to figure out a way to put on some shorts with this suit. Just so you know, Sade, that's how I'm going to work that one out, just so I can get it by, get it by the sensors. All right, you got those uh, 60s that'll show up once again. Chico forecast looks good, a lot of sunshine. And once again, those 90s stick around until we drop the temperatures down through early next week. And they stay down for next week. That's important to know. They don't get back up to those 90s so quickly. Back to you. Looking forward to it. And it would be a great fashion choice for you, Brian, if you wear the shorts with, I'm just saying. All right, now let's head on over to KRCRTV.com and check out, in case you missed it tonight, in Tehama County, a man was arrested after trying to pull off a creative break-in into a fire station Saturday night. Now the Tehama County Sheriff's Office says Michael Roach tried to sneak his way into the Los Molinos Fire Department through the roof. They were able to detain the would-be burglar with the help of a canine and have booked him into the Tehama County Jail. All right. Also in Tehama County, residents at a home along DeWig Avenue had to make a quick escape after their house caught on fire yesterday. Cal Fire says they were able to get out in time because of their working smoke detectors. Now, fire crews were able to contain the fire before it could spread anywhere else and are currently investigating what might have caused the fire. And in Shasta County, Barnes & Nobles in Redding is making a big move into a new and larger location. The beloved bookstore will be taking over Redding's old Bed Bath & Beyond location off of Hilltop Drive, offering a much larger space for the bookstore, sitting at 25,000 square feet. Now, the move will also come with an all-new design of the bookstore. Now, there isn't an exact date for the move yet, but Barnes & Noble says it will be sometime this September. All right, you can get all the day's news anytime with our KRCR News Channel 7 app. Just search KRCR in your device's app store. All right, there's still a lot more to come tonight on the 7 at 7. Megan Trainer under fire for saying F teachers will tell you why after the break. Larger now, let's head online and find out what's trending. Up first, done with Fox is trending. Fox News says they are tuckered out. It's official. Tucker Carlson and Fox News have cut ties. Now, he was the host for the network's 8 p.m. hour. The unexpected announcement comes one week after Fox News settled a blockbuster defamation lawsuit with Dominion Voting Systems. Now, Fox agreed to pay Dominion for $787 million over the network's spreading of election lies and in which Carlson played a key role. In a media release, Fox News thanked Carlson and said his last show was Friday, April 21st. Up next, Megan Trainer is trending on Twitter space. The singer apologized for recent controversial remarks about teachers. The comments came last week during a discussion about parenthood on her podcast. Now, Trainer said she's homeschooling her kids, saying that safety was a concern, referencing to school shootings. When guest Trisha Paytas uh, spoke about negative experiences with educators and concerns over potential bullies, Trainer added, quote, F teachers, dude. Now educators were quick to call Trainer out for the comments. She addressed the remarks in a TikTok video yesterday apologizing, saying she was, quote, fired up for recent school shootings in the U.S. And lastly, it's National Library Week. I don't know why I sang that, but it is great because great is reading and reading is great, that whole thing. Anyway, people took to social media to show their support of reading, but people were also calling attention to the current book bans in public schools. And the AMA says most titles being targeted have authors or characters who are LGBTQ or non-white, which is why today is Right to Read Day. This celebration will keep going all week. All right, now let's move on to entertainment news. The Late Late Show is ending its carpool karaoke segment with host James Corden in a memorable way. The final guest will be 
Adele. In this segment, Adele will be picking up Gordon at home and driving him to work. I guess it's a carpool. Well, it is. Duh, it's the name. Singer, the singer will be interviewing Gordon about past carpools. It's the last karaoke uh, segment as Gordon uh, prepares to leave his role as the host for the show. All right. Up next, a movie theater got a surprise from a famous... <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Famous visitor. The moment of the day is next. <laughs> Movie theater in Alaska got a surprise visitor last week, a moose. Take a look. Now, workers at the cinema were surprised to see the animal walk right through the door and into the lobby at about 8 o'clock p.m. It happened after employees propped the door open to let some cool air in. The moose wasn't interested in seeing the show, unfortunately. I guess he didn't have tickets for the movie. Instead, it followed to um, some popcorn, and he was uh, spent five minutes chowing down on a free meal before workers were able to... Uh, uh, get the moose out of there. That's something they say they were only able to do because the moose was young and wouldn't have tried if it was an adult. All right. <laughs> That's great. Thank you so much for watching and welcoming us into your home. Uh, we'll be back at 10 on Fox 20 and 11 right here on Channel 7. Have a good night.